Hey, what's up everyone? I hope you're all having a wonderful time. Today we're going to take a quick look on the Shrine Berserker and this is not going to be a full build guide but more of a showcase and the idea around it. But uh, with Kelgar League they introduced weapon enchants and for the staff you were able to get uh, gain a random shrine buff every 10 seconds and this is a quite strong enchant and when you combine this with both the gull and also blunder boar for even more shrine effect and duration and another thing that's also really interesting about this all is that you actually get the bonuses from your atlas skill tree as well so the gull gives us lesser shrines for different kinds of buffs but uh, we also get increased to shrine duration and also the shrine effect by 75% and if we take a look on the duration here we can also get 75% from the atlas skill tree as well and this will add up to a total of 125%. Blunderbore gives us the Lesser Brutal Shrine and that's for 20% increased damage, stun duration on enemies and also knockback. And we also get a Lesser Massive Shrine that's 10% increased character size, 20% area of effect and also maximum life. And also on this one you also get additional 75% Shrine effect. And if we add up all of this, we get uh, 75 from the body armor, 75 from the gull, and then we get an additional 50% from our atlas tree. And that's going to add up to a total of 200%. So that's quite a lot of buffs to shrines alone and it's uh, really super funny doing maps with this but uh, sadly with this footage you see here is without the staff enchant but you can still have some fun with it. But uh, yeah as of now I just put around 3 devices to this build. It's really easy to set it up and you can start even with a lower budget if you like to and uh, currently I can put up around 10 million DPS and that's going to be with the banner and rage up but uh, just crazy how much damage you can get from this with such a low investment I feel. But the good thing is that the cost of the runes is dropping right now and uh, we're definitely going to try it out and take a closer look on it uh, when we can't afford them because I'm just poor as hell at the moment. But uh, if we go back to the idea at least the shrines you get from the enchant will last 10 seconds by default and these do scale with the duration so it's going to boost them to around 22 seconds meaning that you will always stay on two shrines basically at all of the time. And uh, some of the more noticeable ones is going to be the massive shrine and that's for increased character size. We get the 40% increased area of effect and also maximum life. Impenetrable shrine and that's going to be for 100% increase to armor, evasion and energy shield. Echoing shrine gives you 100% more attack and cost speed. Brutal shrine for 50% increased damage. And acceleration shrine for the 50% increase to action speed. And then when you take in consideration that we also have the 200% buff effect as well, making these shrines three times as strong and at the same time buffing all of the lesser shrines as well that we also have as they are giving us a separate buff. While mapping you will also get by default two shrines per map if you spec into the shrines on the atlas and that's going to be without any scarabs. And uh, each shrine you take will also give you one additional shrine effect, so you get two of them and these will last for around 100 seconds, which is usually enough to run through a whole map. Now if you're interested in a budget version, I'll go over what I've been playing around with uh, as of now and uh, you can find the PV in the description as well if you'd like to check it out. And the version I'm playing is going to be the Berserker and this is because of updated Rage that they did. And we now get more attack damage from this and we are at the moment at 55 Rage right now. And the Berserker Ascendancy also gives us attack speed per Rage and we also gain 50% Rage effect as well here. And obviously we're also going with Aspect of Carnage and that's for the 4% more damage from this. And when you take all of these things here it do really start to add up putting all of these together. Aspect of Carnage it do make you take 10% increased damage taken though. So do keep that in mind. You will have to build some extra defense for this. And uh, lastly we're also using Flawless Savagery. We get some flat physical damage if we haven't dealt a critical strike recently and also get some extra crit strike multiplier and also increase crit chance. 
And how rage works is if you have not been hit or gained rage in the past two seconds, you will lose 10 rage every second instead. But uh, by being the berserker, we can boost this number a little bit. And uh, also by taking every rage wheel basically in the passive tree makes us also gain rage really, really fast. So we can reach those max stacks in just a couple of hits. We're using ground slam of earth shaking and that's for the huge wave that it makes in front of us covering basically half the screen and this scales really well when you're getting that massive shrine for 120% increase to area of effect but uh, you can use other skills as well here if you like thunder is something that works really great here uh, even sweep works but uh, ground slam is uh, the one that I really found was the best for me at least we're also using a timeless jewel and in this case it's the glorious vanity with Auna on it and this is going to be for the immortal ambition and this basically gives us overleech for health and this means that we are still going to leech life even when we are at full health and it's a really strong defensive for this build and really helps with survivability. And the number of my glorious vanity that I'm using that's going to be for three of the ritual of might. We get the chance to deal double damage and also increase the physical damage from this. So we have one over here, one here and also one on the top here. That's going to add up to around 100% increase of physical damage and 12% chance to deal double damage. And on the POB you can find yourself a own timeless jewel. It don't have to be uh, the number that I'm using right here. But if you go here and then you pick up some of the extra notes here that are close by uh, inside of this area, right? Uh, I have picked some extra just for the purpose of the video. Then you want to press find timeless jewel here. You change to glorious vanity, conquer Ahuna and then you want to add the jewel as the wheel. Click on filter and then you want to grab uh, the one that you want and for this case it's uh, ritual of might there we go and then you just play search so as you can see here there's actually one number that have four of these that you can pick up if you like to and you have a couple one with three of them as well so there are quite a bit of uh, different numbers that you can choose from and then you can copy to url paste it on your web browser and they are quite cheap most of them are under one divine so not too crazy of a price for them the important node for this is going to be the double damage so do keep in mind that it do vary between two and four percent so always check before uh, you buy one so you get the most value of it now we take a closer look on the rest of the passive tree here uh, we have some that we want to take a closer look at First we have Spirit of War and this is going to be for physical attack damage, Leech as mana. So this is our mana recovery which is really important. We are using Unwavering Stance for the stun immunity. And uh, we do pick up some of the accuracy nodes here. We have uh, some additional one over here. And if you do get like accuracy on your weapon for example or on your uh, uh, rings. Uh, you might be able to uh, unspec from some of these to get some extra points. And I also picked up these two for the elemental resist as I'm starving on that right now. So that's uh, two additional points you can use for something else. Uh, but yeah, we're picking up uh, the stave nodes right here and that's for the crit with staves. And we also have the crit node right here with uh, the crit mastery. But yeah, it's pretty basic actually. We have uh, every rage wheel we have one here we have one up here and also down here vengeance pretty nice as you also get increased armor from this as well some crit uh, this wheel right here is uh, really important also here we get uh, some uh, physical attack damage leaves life and extra recovery from that as well and uh, combining this with immortal uh, ambition here with the life leech uh, really strong to have for just a couple of nodes. You also get uh, instant leech from the leech mastery, which is uh, very nice to have. Something that I was uh, thinking about, maybe investing in later, is going to be to pick up those uh, block nodes for the stuff as well. We have some to the right here that we can use also. There's other sources that you can get from as well. Tattoos is another option. 
with strength, but we don't want to uh, take away too much of the strength and uh, that's going to be if we take a look on our gear here. So for the gear we went over Blunderbore and uh, this is one of the reasons that you won't that you actually need to get quite a bit of strength that you do have the extra strength requirement with this and I'm uh, all just under 800 strength with this so do try to get a roll that's uh, pretty low as it do help out that you can invest in other modifiers on your gear uh, the increased effect of shrines is the one that you want to go for try to get that as high as possible and also armor as well and uh, yeah we also went over the goal same here for the shrine effects right and if we take a look on our weapon here i bought the base for one divine that's for the hybrid fuse and accuracy here and i just basically just spammed a couple of essence of uh, contempt i think i did like five and managed to hit this one got the increased attack speed for this and just crafted increased physical damage and uh, yeah so that's the save and if you really want to go a budget build, you can actually buy a 6 link staff and they are basically under 5 chaos I think. And uh, yeah, really cheap for a 6 link and then you can just buy a non 6 link blunderbore chest armor here. But the hybrid fuse on the stave as a fracture is uh, really important. It's just really easier to get those higher uh, fuse numbers up with this on it and it's absolutely worth the divine it cost. And you can also use the craft bench uh, recipe for a six link and it's about a divine in cost of fusing right now so it's not too expensive can be good to know about and for the rings here you want to go for life you want to go for strength and if you can some resist as well also the non channeling skills have minus two mana cost is really important here and that same is going to be for the amulet you have three uh, nodes here and basically makes the skill uh, cost less for the anoint serpent stance is the one that i went for here and that's just for the global crit chance and multiplier for when using a staff and for the gloves here i went for some uh, attack speed accuracy and strength and also life and then we have the magnet and this is uh, quite nice to have you get uh, additional 10 percent chance to deal double damage while you have at least 200 strength and also a small percent there five percent to deal triple damage and uh, this adds up with uh, those notes that we get from Ritual of Might. So we have 12% from this. And then we get another 10 from this for double damage, which is quite nice. You can actually get additional uh, on your staff as well if you really want to min-max this. And if you take a look on our flaws, we're using a Divine Life Flaws with uh, immunity to bleed. We have a Diamond Flaws for crit chance. And here we also went with an increase to movement speed. We have a silver flask and that's going to be for an onslaught buff and this is also with the reduced effect of curses on us and also quick silver for movement speed with increased armor and then lastly a lion's roar and that's a granite flask we get the base armor from this but uh, we also get to that 10 percent more melee physical damage during this effect for pantheons we're using soul of lunaris we get some extra physical damage reduction and also movement speed with uh, for each nearby enemy up to 8%, chance to avoid projectiles, reduce elemental damage taken if we've been hit recently, and we also avoid projectiles that has been shamed. And for the lesser one, Soul of Shikari is the one that I went with, and that's for the mitigation to poison. Uh, poison can't be afflicted on us if there are at least 3 poisons on you, and some extra chaos damage mitigation there as well. And for the bandits, I went and saved Alera, and that's going to be for the 15% to uh, all elemental resist. It's just really helpful, and you can change that later on when you have your resist up for one additional passive point. Now we take a quick look on the POB. We average damage is uh, 2.5 million per hit, with a total DPS around 10 million, and that's going to be with banner and buffs up. We have a decent defense, nothing crazy, this is uh, not a defensive character as of now and I don't really know how a POB is uh, calculating the shrines. I'm guessing that the lesser shrines is calculated but obviously not the massive ones that you get while doing this so uh, do keep that in mind. And for our skill links we're using ground slam of earth shaking with brutality, melee physical damage, pulverize, fortify and also multi strike. We're using War Banner and that's going to be for bosses 
And we also have Flesh and Stone, and it's something that can change depending on the situation here. Uh, blood Stance give you more physical damage, and uh, Sand Stance make you take less damage taken. And then we're also using Purity of Elements. You get uh, plus to all elemental resist, but this also makes us immune to elemental ailments. So that's including Freeze and Ignite, Shock and all of that. Really quality of life to have. Hell of Purity, another aura giving us a uh, more physical damage from this. We have uh, Enduring Cry with Urgent Order and we get some uh, life regen from this per power that we get, but this also help us keep up our Enduring Charges. We have Assassin's Mark and that's linked with Mark on Hit. So this is always going to be applying to all enemy when we are healing them, providing a base crit chance and multipliers. And we also have a 5% chance to grant us a power charge when we are hit. And uh, we also gain power charge when we slain a enemy. Life tap with Berserk. And Berserk is something that you will uh, use on the bosses as well here. And we get uh, almost 60% increased rage effect while using this. And uh, yeah, really boost those numbers up. We have automation with blood rage and we get some attack physical damage which is life from this and this is also going to be used to generate those charges for us. We do lose life per second though but with life leech up all of the time it doesn't really matter. And then we also have a molten shell with more duration that's also going to be triggering by automation. Using Leap Slam with Foster Attack for mobility and then we also have Precision, another aura for crit chance and accuracy uh, linked to Arrogance and this will now reserve uh, life instead of mana. So what do you think about the Shrine Berserker? Have you tried it out before or tried another version of it? Feel free to tell me in the comments below. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. As I said, see you in the next one. Bye!